Good day to D. We're talking about equations of lines today, and hopefully at the end of this lesson you'll be able to say, I can find the equation of a line if I know another line that is parallel or perpendicular to it. So to start with, we're going to have a little bit of a look at parallel lines and what we know about them. Uh, this should be a review of last year. Here we have a pair of parallel lines, and you guys know, you've known for years, that parallel lines are lines that go in the same direction, they never intersect. So we're going to take a look at what we know about the slope of this particular pair of parallel lines. So I'm going to find the slope. I'm going to pick a couple of points right on this line, and I'm going to find the slope between them. So if I have a look, that looks like I have a rise of 2 and a run of 3, which since slope is rise over run. For this line in particular, I have a slope of two thirds. Now let's take a look at the other parallel line we have. I've got one point here and one point here. And if we take a look at that rise and run, it has a rise of two and a run of three. So the slope is two thirds. So from this we can see, and this is just one particular pair of parallel lines, but it works for all parallel lines. They have the same slope. So let's take a look at our points over here. If two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. And stating that backwards, so I know if I find two lines that are parallel, I know when I make that slope calculation, I'm going to get the same number. Contrary to that, if I have two lines that I know have the same slope, I can conclude that they're parallel. So if two lines have the same slope, they must be parallel. And then since horizontal and vertical lines are different, I'm going to make this statement that says all horizontal lines are parallel and all vertical lines are parallel. So how does this apply to equations of lines? Well, let's have a look at this question here. It simply says, give the equation of a line parallel to y equals 5x minus 3. Well, this line is in y equals mx plus b form. So since it's in y equals mx plus b form, I know that this is the slope. And so any line parallel to this line is going to have a slope of 5. So I can write any line I want as long as it has a slope of 5. So I'm going to do that in y equals mx plus b form because it's much, much simpler. y equals 5x. There, that line will be parallel to 5x minus 3. So would y equals 5x plus 7. As long as I don't put a minus 3 on the end, because if I put a minus 3 on the end, then I have exactly the same line, and that's a different set of circumstances. So I just have to have a slope of 5, and I know that my line is parallel to the one that's given. Okay, now, moving on to perpendicular. Here's a couple of perpendicular lines. Uh, perpendicular lines intersect at 90 degrees. So we're going to have a look at uh, the equations for these two, or not equations, but slopes for these two. I think they got shuff, shifted just a tiny little bit on me. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to find two points on the green line right there. And that looks like uh, it's going to have a rise of negative two because it's going down and a run of three. So the slope is negative 2 over 3. Now let's take a look at the red line. Um, here's another good point on the red line, and it has that one there as well. So it looks like I have a rise of 3 and a run of 2. So for the red line, the slope equals 3 over 2. Now take a look at these two numbers. Uh, one of them is positive, one of them is negative. And they're the reciprocal of each other. And that's actually what we say. We say parallel lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. The negative makes sure that our sign is the opposite of what we had before. So what I could say just in math writing is M1 is perpendicular to M2 if m1 is the same thing as 1 over m2 that's what that's how we write that we're going to flip it over but we got to have a negative in front of it too so that's how you write negative reciprocal so let's take a look at the points that i have over here i'm just going to pull these things across 
Here's our first point. It says, if two lines are perpendicular, they have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And the converse to that says that if, oops, that's the wrong one. All horizontal lines are perpendicular to vertical lines. We need that, but that's not where I wanted it. And this one here says that two lines, if two lines have negative reciprocal slopes, we can conclude that they are perpendicular. So these ones I know definitely meet at a 90 degree angle because they have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. One is negative two thirds, and when I flip it over and change the sign, I get positive three halves. So let's have a look at a few more examples here. Give the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals negative 2x plus 6. Now this is the number that's important here. That is the slope. That negative 2 there is the slope. And the reciprocal of negative 2, or the negative reciprocal, the negative reciprocal of negative 2 is, well, we got to flip it over. So remember, this is 2 over 1. So when I flip it over, I get 1 over 2. And since this one was negative, a negative of a negative is a positive. So the reciprocal, negative reciprocal of negative 2 is positive a half. So now I can write the equation of any line I want as long as it has a slope of a half. So y equals 1 half x. That's 1. Uh, y equals one-half x uh, minus two. As long as whatever I write down, y equals one-half x uh, minus seven, or plus seven, any of those will be perpendicular to this line right here because its slope is a negative reciprocal. Now, let's find some more specific lines. Give the equation of a line perpendicular to that one. Now this one, 5x minus 6y plus 3 equals 0. It's a little tougher to find out what the, re uh, what the negative reciprocal slope is because I don't know the slope. That line is in standard form. And in standard form, we don't get a whole lot of information from it. So what I need to do is rearrange that line and get the y completely by itself. Because in slope y-intercept form, the one that gives us the slope and the y-intercept, y is completely by itself. So I need to find the slope. So I'm going to say finding slope. And this line is 5x minus 6y plus 3 equals 0. I need to do whatever I can to get y by itself. Now in this particular equation, it's easiest if I get the y's over to where the 0 is. So I'm going to add 6y to both sides. Once I add 6y to both sides, this side is just 5x plus 3. And this side is positive 6y. And then if I want that y completely by itself, that 6 is multiplying the y, so to get rid of it, I divide. And I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Now that divide by 6 gets distributed through here, the same way as distributive law when we multiply. Dividing is kind of the same way. So this is actually 5, 6, x plus 3 over 6 is 1 half. So now I know this is the... One, the one with the x is the slope. So this is the slope of the line I was given. And I want to write a line that is perpendicular to that. So I want to say the perpendicular slope, and here's how I'm going to say that. I'm going to say m perpendicular equals, i got to flip it over, 6 over 5, and i got to give it the opposite sign. So it was positive down here. It's going to be negative up here. So the perpendicular slope to that thing is negative 6 over 5. And now, as long as I write a line that has negative 6 over 5 with an x, and it doesn't have the half in it because I don't want it to be exactly the same line, as long as I write something like that that has this here, I'm going to have a, a line that is perpendicular to that one.
So, and I'm just going to put this little, I'm going to say, is the required equation. That's what I-T-R-E stands for. Is the required equation. Okay, going on. Whoop. Next page. Example four. Give the equation of a line parallel to that one. 7x minus 3y equals minus 6 equals 0 that passes through 5, negative 2. So uh, last time we took the slope point form of the line, and I could do that as long as I know slope and a point. So I've been given a point. That's not a problem. I have my point so that I can use the uh, slope point formula, which is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And that will give me the equation of the line, but I don't have anything for m just yet. But they've given me this information. They've told me that the, the m I want has to be the same as the m for that line. Again, we got a problem because I don't know the m for that line. That's in standard form, and standard form doesn't give me that information. So I need to rearrange that line into slope y-intercept form before I can plug it into my handy-dandy slope point formula. So let's find slope. So I'm going to say finding slope. Dot, dot, dot. And I need to rearrange this. 7x minus 3y minus 6 equals 0. Again, I got to get y completely by itself so that it's in slope-intercept form, and then I know what the slope and the y-intercept are. So this is, I'm going to add 3y to both sides, and I get 7x minus 6 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3, and I get 7 over 3x minus 2 equals y. That's when I divided through by 3. So now here is the pair, here's the slope, and I know that, so I'm going to say, therefore, the m parallel, and I'm going to use that little, looks like an 11, but it's kind of two parallel lines, the parallel slope will also be 7 thirds. So I want to find that equation, and I'm going to do it right up here. y minus y1 is negative 2, so it's actually y plus 2, equals m is 7 thirds x minus x1, my x1 is 5. Once again, my y and my x came from up there. And now I just have to put it in standard form because usually I'm going to want these in standard form. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 3 to get rid of that denominator because we don't want fractions in standard form. So I'm going to multiply by 3. Those 3's cancel. And when those 3's cancel, it's just the 7 that goes through the brackets. And this 3 is going to go through those brackets. And so what we actually get is 3y plus 6. And on this side, we have 7x minus 35. And now if I rearrange that into standard form, I have to have an x, then a y, then the constant term. So I'm going to get this side equal to 0, because the x's are already positive over here. And so I subtract the 3y, and then I subtract 6. So that's going to give me minus 41. So there is my equation in standard form. So I say, is the required equation? One last question. It's very, very similar, except that now it's perpendicular instead of parallel. So I have to say finding slope and the slope of this line, if I rearrange it, I get 9x plus 12y minus 4 equals 0. When I rearrange that, I'm going to get subtract 12y on both sides. When I subtract 12y on both sides, I now have 9x minus 4 equals negative 12y. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 12. And everything gets divided by negative 12. So this side is just y, and this side, well, this fraction reduces to 3 quarters, negative 3 quarters x. And then plus, because I got two negatives here, uh, plus, whoops, 
uh, negative 3 quarters x plus uh, 1 third. So this is what I needed. That tells me what the slope is. And so I want the perpendicular slope of that. that. So I say, therefore, slope perpendicular is equal to 4 thirds. Remember, got to flip it over and change the sign. So now I'm just going to plug it into the, my handy formula again. So I plugged my point in for x1, y1. And remember, the signs are going to change because I've got some negatives up here. So I plug that into my x1, y1, and now I'm going to get rid of that fraction. And I'm going to show you that step again. I need to multiply through by 3, this denominator. If I multiply through by that denominator, then I get rid of it. So those 3's cancel, and now it's just the 4 that goes through the brackets. So we get 3y plus 21 equals 4x plus 24. And since my x term is already positive on this side, I think I'm going to leave my x's there. I'm going to leave my x's over there and get this side over here equal to 0. So by doing that, I'm going to subtract 3y. So I have 4x minus 3y. And I'm going to subtract 21. So that's plus 3. And that is the required equation. And that finishes our lesson for today.